Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. In this video I'm gonna show you our holiday in Barcelona. It was in February. If you didn't watch my first video in which I explained how it happened that we live in Bulgaria now, there is a link in the right upper corner and in the description to this video. We went to Barcelona in the middle of February. It wasn't our first time there, but previous couple of visits were shorter. This time we spent two weeks in Barcelona and a week in Gaba, Gaba del Mar. It's the suburbs of Barcelona with uh, many nice uh, cottages and uh, very close to the sea, to the beach. We were also visiting San Boy a lot. San Boy de Obregat is also suburbs of Barcelona. But I'll make a separate video about the suburbs. Today I invite you to the places we visited this time. They include La Barceloneta Beach, El Raval, Buqueria, Arc de Triomphe, and Park La Citadella, Barcelona Zoo, and Montjuic Hill and Castle. This will be the first part of the vlog. I will do one or two parts more, because uh, in this vlog I can't cover all the places we visited, and there will be more less famous places as well. I really love Antonio Gaudi's buildings, but we visited them before and this time we were with a kid, so we didn't go to any. Just enjoyed them from the outside. I fell in love with Barcelona from the first visit. That first time we were there with my relatives and we spent there a few days. Second time me and Pete went on holiday in Spain when I was pregnant and stayed there for about three days. Uh, but we stayed in the suburbs and uh, just visited the center. And this time was the longest visit and the proper stay in the downtown area close to, to the center uh, in Montjuic and also a stone throw uh, from the Arc of Triumph. We spent a couple of days there and then moved to Montjuic area. And we really enjoyed this time, uh, at least before uh, the well-known events that are happening now in Ukraine started. If you ask me where to stay in Barcelona, I'd say that these places, Montjuic and uh, the area around the Plaza Catalunya or Plaza de España are the best, uh, because it makes a big difference uh, whether you stay downtown or you have to go every day for half an hour or so or even more to a uh, central area. If you want to see the quintessence of the city, you better stay uh, in the downtown area. So let's start with La Barceloneta. It's a famous sand beach close to the center of Barcelona and it was my first time here. I never visited it yet before. I don't know why it just happened like this. And uh, I think it's a perfect place to feel the atmosphere and uh, to observe people. You just sit down on the beach and watch the people around. It is especially enjoyable if you just arrived from a cold city, from winter, from gloomy and dark streets, into the sun, into the brightness, into the warmth. <sighs> Believe me, it's beautiful. The first couple of nights we spent uh, in the little apartment next to the Arc de Triomphe 
and Parc de la Citadella. Arc de Triomphe was built in 1888 uh, as a main gate to the Barcelona World Fair and since then it's been a, one of the symbols of the city. Uh, this apartment was a little too small to, for a longer stay so we moved to Montjuic later. So let's go back to the Arc de Triomphe. It leads to the Citadella Park, uh, which was the main Barcelona's green zone till the beginning of 19th century. And uh, now it's a nice park where you can sit on a bench, listen to the birds. And there is also a zoo. I hate zoos, to be honest. And this time we decided to go there and show animals to our daughter, Naomi. Mm, and this time I enjoyed it. The animals seem to be in good state and uh, there is a variety of them. Birds, reptiles and mammals. It's very interesting. Let's go and see the chimpanzees and the, and the snakes. Come on! Look, 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 Let's take the chimpanzee as well. It's so cool. Spain is famous for tapas, which translates as snacks or appetizers. But what initially served as a snack accompanying wine or beer now can be eaten as a full course meal. At pre 19th century Spain, tapas were served at alberques or bodegas, the inns offering meals and rooms for travelers. Since few innkeepers could write and few travelers read, inns offered their guests a sample of the dishes available on a tapa, the word for pot cover in Spanish. Another tapas origin theory says that the tapas tradition may have begun when King Alfonso X of Castile recovered from an illness by drinking wine with small dishes between meals. After regaining his health, the king ordered that taverns wouldn't be allowed to serve wine to customers unless it was accompanied by a small snack or tapa. Barcelona is famous for its seafood tapas. It's very fresh and nice. Look at this octopus. I like to roam around El Raval. It's an area historically infamous for its nightlife and cabarets, as well as prostitution and crime. Today, El Raval has changed significantly in recent years, and due to its central location, has become a minor attraction of Barcelona. It currently has a very diverse immigrant community. And there is also a contemporary art museum of Barcelona. Skateboarders and other young people like to hang out there. The city's most famous market, La Boqueria, is also situated in the Raval.
one of the days we went to explore the Manjuic castle. Munjik translates as a Jewish mountain from medieval Latin, and because the remains of a medieval Jewish cemetery have been found there, it gives a name to both the park and the hill with the castle. Up goes a cable car if you don't want to walk, but we prefer to walk. Beam. Go! Abracadabra. Stop! Whoa! Again? Abracadabra, Zimzalabim. Start! Abracadabra, Zimzalabim. Whoa! <laughs> Again? Uh, you sure? The castle was built in 1640, although later the initial fortress was demolished and the new one rebuilt in the 18th century. In the last 350 years, Monjuic Castle has played a decisive role in the history of the city, becoming a symbol after the Catalan defeat to Spain in 1714, date that has become of significant importance. Since then, the Monjuic cannons have bombarded the city and its citizens on various occasions, and Monjuic has been used as a prison and torture center repeatedly for three centuries. Later in the 20th century, the castle became a military museum. Today, it's one of the most popular view spots in the city, with views over all parts of Barcelona. We reached this viewpoint an hour before it closed at 6 p.m. And there were not too many people. It was nice. Mommy. Yeah. Here is a glimpse of our Montjuic apartment. It was in a historical building, in a very old house, I think of 19th century, with all the consequences, if you know what I mean. To be sure, it was a bit too dark and too noisy. I think I'm gonna do a separate room tour. Having a tapas lunch with my cousin Tanya. You can't imagine Spanish and Catalan cuisine without pan con tomate. Bread with tomatoes. It's very easy to make. Spread some olive oil on bread and smear over fresh pressed tomato and some squeezed garlic. Mmm, yummy. Thank you. 
This is traditional Catalan dessert, crema catalana, which is made out of milk, eggs, sugar and some cinnamon or lemon zest. Pretty tasty. Our last spot for today is Arenas. It's a big shopping center on the Plaza de España. It's famous for its 360 viewpoint, which is free to visit. In the next Barcelona vlog I'm gonna show you more Montjuic highlights, another great but less popular viewpoint called Bunker, Juan Miro Park and more. Subscribe to my channel and press the little bell not to miss the upcoming videos. Thank you for watching, bye bye!